Good afternoon, traders and investors. Will back here with another one coming to it a Sunday night video, guys. And it's that time of the week again where we go over the top five options plays for the upcoming week. Now, keep in mind, guys, all of these options plays are going to be for selling options, more specifically for selling put options as part of the broader strategy that we run on the channel called the wheel strategy, where we write set, where we write puts to get into a trade and then sell covered calls to get out of a trade. Very easy strategy to run, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or even advanced investor. Think of selling puts, guys, as buy limit orders that pay you. So I'll give an example. Let's say you want to buy 100 shares of Amazon in this very nice dip opportunity area, pretty much down in the 177.50 range. Well, you can either set a buy limit order right here at 177.50 for 100 shares. But if the market never gets there, well, you'll just never get filled. That is where selling put orders come into play. Let's say I wanted to buy those same 100 shares of Amazon at 177.50, but I'm not quite sure if they're actually going to get there by the Friday close. What I can do is I can sell one put option here, which gives me the right to buy 100 shares at that strike. Now let's take a look at the options premium for Amazon, and you can see at 177.50, there is about $120 in premium. So it's as follows, guys. If I write the 177.50 put, aka if I sell that put to open, I'm going to collect roughly $120. And if ever the stock get does not get there by Friday, well, I just keep all of the $120 in my pocket. However, if it does make it down below and even further well i have to pick up the 100 shares that i agreed to buy at that level and i still keep the 120 dollars very easy strategy to run guys and then if ever we get assigned the shares meaning we have to buy the shares the following week guys we are just going to write covered calls against the position for even more premium in hopes of getting called away and just collecting all of that money in our pockets very easy strategy to run so in today's video guys we're going to go over a few things together number one going to take a look at a few strategy rules specific to the put wheel strategy number two we're going to take a look at the top last five, last week's top five options plays and see how those went even though we may have gotten assigned a few and then lastly guys we're going to take a look at this week's top five options plays and as per usual i do have a bunch of bonus plays for you guys it's going to be a very volatile week so potentially a lot of money to be made on the table so without further ado guys let's get right into it now before the strategy rules let's go into a little bit of a context of how the market is doing right now spy of course coming down into a big daily correction mode and potentially even some weekly correction as well but just keep in mind guys the bulls are in long-term control of this weekly uptrend and of course, in long-term control of the monthly. So these short-term corrections that may last up to, you know, maybe an extra another week, week and a half, similar to what we had in the month of April, in my humble opinion, are buying opportunities. And it's the same thing really for the QQQs, right? QQQs in a little bit of a daily downtrend right now. And on the weekly, nice weekly uptrend is maintained and coming to a large support area for the QQQs as well. So even though we are in a short-term correction for the markets, just understand guys, who is in control of the weeklies and the monthlies, and it is still your long-term bulls, which is why I truly do believe that this does represent a very good buying opportunity on a lot of your favorite companies out there. Now, let's keep in mind, guys, this week is going to be extremely volatile. Last week, we had a nice little spike in the VIX, and potentially this week, that could continue if we get some further tech and especially semiconductor weakness in the markets. Now, keep in mind, guys, this week is going to be an extremely eventful week. So if you don't want to play anything this week, I cannot blame you, right? You are perfectly fine to sit on the sidelines if the volatility is a bit too much for you. Keep in mind, we have a lot of things coming up this week, guys. Just to name a few, uh, in terms of macro news, we do have GDP numbers coming out on the Thursday session. And then Friday, we have an inflation report, the PCE inflation report. So GDP and inflation reports, definitely going to be two of the major things at the tail end of the week. Now, prior to these events, we have so many company earnings this week, guys. It's going to be a very, very big week. And a lot of other companies that are not here may just be affected by the ones that are here. So keep that in mind. Very large earnings, guys. Spotify, UPS, Coca-Cola, a few defense names, Lockheed Martin, Tesla, Google, Enphase, Visa, Texas Instruments, Capital One, one of our credit cards, right? So many more throughout the week, guys. Chipotle, ServiceNow, right? IBM, tons of them. Thermo Fisher, one of your defense names as well. Uh, AbbVie, one of your healthcare names as well. Honeywell, another defense name. RTX, Raytheon Corporation. Another one, Keurig Dr. Pepper, which comes in line with Coca-Cola too. On Friday, we also have 3M and so many more in between, guys. So a lot of action over the course of this week could be quite a volatile one. And the number three event that is going to potentially bring some volatility into the markets this week is what happened over the course of this afternoon. Joe Biden formally stepping down 
from the presidential race. He has now forfeited his candidate his candidacy to be the runner for the Democrat Party. He is pretty much um uh, he's pretty much backed Kamala Harris right now, endorsing Kamala Harris to potentially replace him. Now the Democratic Party has not chosen an official replacement candidate, however, but this is going to be a very volatile week, guys. Just because what does the market not like at all? The market does not like uncertainty, right? So these catalysts, the macro events, the earnings, and Joe Biden stepping down from the presidential race, those are all going to be very, very volatile events for the market, brings in a little bit more uncertainty, which is why we may just have some very, very, either a very, very choppy week or potentially some continued downside. Now, in terms of how the markets are open right now, futures are going on an absolute tear. And that is potentially because we have uh, approached as of last Friday, very, very oversold conditions on the SPY on the four hour and on the US 100, which is the NASDAQ as well, right? So keep that in mind, Monday and Tuesday could be an opportunity for a bounce, but we may just be looking for a lower high into potentially some further downside continuation, especially if these macro events are not received too well by the markets. And if some of your larger companies in this earnings cycle do not meet their criteria and come down, right? So just keep all of that in mind, guys. Very volatile week. So I do not blame anybody if you want to sit on the sidelines, wait for the volatility to pass, and then scout out some opportunities thereafter, right? So let's get into some of the strategy rules right away, shall we? And I'm going to go over these quickly, guys, because I don't want to spend too much time. I want to shorten the videos right now. So we're going to go, we're going to really fly through these um, strategy rules. If you haven't seen my 35 minute video on a detailed portion of how I run this strategy, how I pick my strikes, how I pick my stocks, I'll leave it top right corner of the video right now and in the video description. So if you want a more detailed view of this strategy, because now we're going to fly through them pretty much. So for the put wheel to be writing put options, right? What do we want to do? Well, first thing we need to be, we need to always be writing puts on a solid company. Never, 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 never write any put options on a company that you do not want to own at the strike price. You do not want to own it, guys. It just is a recipe for uh, bad trade management thereafter. If you get trapped in a position and you don't have high conviction in a company, managing the position becomes emotionally cumbersome, right? Take a look, guys. Prime example for that is necessarily Visa, right? Do you guys think that I would mind get assigned on getting assigned on Visa in the lower 260s after three, four months of glorious pullback when the long term chart looks like this? Such a profitable legacy company. I really don't care being assigned any Visa shares down there, but you can't say the same thing for every single company out there, right? So just make sure you have very high conviction in any company you choose to write options on. Number two, we want to be writing stocks that are in a monthly uptrend or in a long term range. Monthly uptrend pretty much just looks exactly like the S&P 500 right now. Clear, clear, clear monthly uptrend. And a long term range is going to be something, let's say, like Autodesk. I always bring this one up, right? So if you see a company in a long term range, something like this, you want to be writing at the lower end of that range. Very, very easy target right now. Number three, we want to be not writing any uh, options on companies that have earnings this week. Very, very volatile, guys. You saw what happened with Starbucks, with Nike, with Salesforce, with ASML last week, Domino's Pizza. So many companies can report very good earnings, but then just gap down 10, 15, 20 percent for X, Y, Z reason. So if you want to be really safe, guys, just do not play any companies that have earnings this week at all. And you should be just fine. Number four, we want to be writing stocks. Uh, uh, we want to be writing positions on companies that are in a long term support area or a break out retest area, right? So bringing up Autodesk once again, let's take a look. So a long term support area could be something like this down there. Very nice opportunity to be writing some puts because we know the bulls are in our backs and a breakout retest is as follows. When the bulls break out in a weekly trend from the long term range, breakout retest of the higher end of resistance, which is now support and then run. This retest range is usually a very high probability trade. So every single trade that I show on the channel will be one of those two criteria. Now, the following go hand in hand, guys. We want to be writing puts at or lower than the expected move on the stock in any given week and tie that into it. We want to be writing on red or flat days. Now, what is an expected move, guys? Very, very simple, right? So an expected move on a stock is Wall Street's probability of how much it can go up or down in any given week. So here you can see I have Tesla pulled up. Let's change it because Tesla actually has earnings this week. So we want to choose a company that does not have earnings. So let's pull up Amazon, right? You can see the expected move for Amazon is 3% up, 3% down. We want to be targeting the lower end of that expected move to the downsides. Whenever we want to write puts, we want to be writing below this number right there. Gives us the best opportunity at not being assigned. And if we can couple that with being on a red or flat day, right? Keep in mind, the expected move on Amazon is 177. So if in the morning on Monday, this stock drops down to 180,
181, let's say, well, then we can even go further below the expected move. Think 175, 174, 173. We want to be going as low as possible below this expected move to once again improve our odds of not being assigned. That's why I love writing uh, puts on stocks that are on red or flat days. Now, before last, we want to be writing 0.5 to 0.75% in weekly premium. That is our ROI for taking on the risk. So very, very simply, guys, what does it mean to be writing half a percent? Well, just look at the strike price right here and the amount of premium that you're going to get. That is your half a percent rule. So if you want to know if you're getting half a percent on this premium, all you have to do is divide the strike price that you're looking at by two, and then you should see that amount in cent increments. So let's see the 177.50 right here. So if we divide the amount of premium that we get, right, $1.18 divided by 177.50, you will see that that is over half a percent, right? Half a percent would be 0.005. If you want to do a, some really, really quick mental math, just do half of the strike. You don't even need a calculator for this half of the strike and then divide it by two and the cent increments is what you should be seeing. So for a strike like 180 stands to argue you should be seeing at least 90 cents. Now, the reason I keep it between 0.5 and 0.75% guys is because it's the sweet spot. After running the strategy for five, six years at this point, I have really derived that this is the best location where you get some decent premium for writing those options, but also the risk of assignment is relatively low. If the reason why I don't go any higher than this guys is because it's too close to the, to the current share price the assignment risk is too high so you may see a lot of premium here at the 180s but just remind yourself guys the 180s are very very close to the current share price and you may be assigned right at the current share price that is only about one and a half percent away right and especially in a volatile week it's just too close so we want to be going lower and lower towards the where we get around half a percent so hopefully that makes sense for everybody now uh, lastly we want to be taking profit at 90 percent of the contract value the, the beautiful thing about this strategy is that we only really need to run it for about 10, 15 minutes on a Monday or Tuesday. We choose our strikes, choose our stocks, write the options, and then we're pretty much done for the week. We let the time decay do the rest. So we want to be setting a take profit, a buy limit order back on that contract for 90% of the value. Just make sure that if you're not at your computer, at least you have a take profit order set. Now, if ever we get assigned the shares, well, then we want to be doing one of two things, or actually we want to be doing just one thing. So we want to be writing covered calls. This is pretty much to get out of the stock, right? The puts are to get into a trade. The covered calls are then to get out of those trades, to sell those shares back to the market. We want to be writing covered calls between 0.5 and 1% in weekly premium. So same thing, guys. If ever you get assigned Amazon next, let's say this week, if you take this trade, get assigned Amazon at 177.50. The following week, you want to be writing calls at your assigned strike price in hopes of being able to get out of the stock. And then lastly, guys, we want to be writing at the assigned strike price or one strike higher. The only time I write one strike higher, guys, is if it, let's say we get a sign on Amazon at 177.50 on the Friday session, and thereafter, Amazon pretty much just on the Monday set, let's say we get a sign down here, right? And then on the Monday session, after it just gaps up, right? Well, then we can probably write strikes one strike price higher than our assigned price, and that will be okay. So hopefully that makes sense for everybody, guys. Now, let's get into last week's top five plays, and you will see that there is a few that got assigned. So on the channel, guys, we've been doing very, very well. We've been doing these top five options plays since pretty much the month of February. And so far, we had only been assigned out of 100 plus plays. We only got assigned two. However, this week, guys, with the uncertainty that happened, big tech rotation, and we're so rotation out of big tech and the Biden administration pretty much um, crashing semiconductor stocks with their renewed crackdowns on uh, semiconductor exports to countries like China. Well, unfortunately, guys, we unfortunately had to get assigned a few positions. So top five of last week, a few of them were assigned and I am in the same boat, guys. I got assigned those as well. So number one was AMD. AMD, we were looking at AMD at pretty much 170 or better. We were looking at the 170 to 167.5 strikes. Unfortunately, if we would have taken those strikes, there was a great opportunity for it on the Tuesday morning to get these strikes or maybe even lower in the mid 160s. Unfortunately, at this point, guys, we are assigned because the stock closed netly lower. So what do we want to do in this uh, occasion, guys? Well, we want to be writing covered calls against the position, right? So let's take a look at some of the covered calls we can be writing on AMD right now. So in terms of AMD for the covered calls, guys, you will see that there's really not much premium in the mid 160s anymore because we're so far away from them, right? So there's a few ways to be playing this right now. Let's say we got a sign at the 167.50 and the 170s. Well, there's not half a percent in premium right there. You would need to see at least 85 cents. And so far, we're only getting it on the 162.50s. So this is pretty much all going to rely. You can do three things, guys, right? And it all depends what kind of investor you are 
are. If you don't mind being assigned AMD and you want to wait for some price recovery to get some more premium closer to where you were assigned, then obviously you can wait. That's strategy number one. It just requires waiting, right? However, if you want to play this a bit more defensively, like I do sometimes, if you are worried about further downside follow through by the bears, there are a few ways that we can protect this and kind of uh, cap the loss, so to speak, right? So number one, we'll be writing options below your assigned strike price. Now, I never really do this except for when indexes are in big form consolidation mode like we are right now, right? So SPY, QQQ, weekly consolidation. So we know it may last a little moment. So what we can do on AMD here, guys, I did it myself last week. If you got assigned at the 170 or 16750, you can write lower than that, guys. In the you can write uh, a bit lower than your assigned strike price. Yes, you will be agreeing to kind of um to kind of cap the loss, right? Because if we ever write at 162.50 and then AMD uh, resumes its course over the week and closes above, well, unfortunately, you will have to take the loss between your assigned strike and the covered call price, right? But if ever it keeps dropping, at least you will have collected a little bit of premium uh, in this level right here, right? So number two is going, to, or number three is going to be very, very defensive, guys. For those of you who are nervous about really some further follow through, what I chose to do last week when I got assigned at 155 on the Friday session, I wrote in the money covered calls, extremely defensive strategy, guys. And you can see the in the money covered calls at the 150 pay about five dollars right now. So at least it gives you a lot of cushion. If ever AMD continues its slide, at least you collect five dollars, which will bring down your average cost a lot more. Now, obviously, the risk of this trade is if ever it pops up more than five dollars, well, unfortunately, guys, your covered calls will be underwater and you'll pretty much have to cap the loss right there. So the two last strategies, guys, are really if you want to cap the loss because you're not satisfied with your entry and you're uncertain how long the recovery may be, right? So just keep those two strategies in mind. They're fine, in my opinion, guys. Sometimes we just have to take the losses. If you're not comfortable with the position, we just have to take the loss and move on to another trade. And a good way to do that, guys, is writing in the money covered calls or slightly out of the money covered calls as well. Now, keep in mind, if AMD rallies, you can always roll these covered calls as well, right? So it's not truly a pure 100% loss. Now, moving on, the next trade also that I did get assigned last week was NVIDIA. Same, same, same concept on NVIDIA. We were looking for maybe the 119s or better. And after the Tuesday session right here, when it came down to 124, I actually wrote the 119 strike for about 55 cents. Well, unfortunately, it did assign us once again. We are now assigned 100 shares of NVIDIA at the 119 level. Now, we have to be careful, guys, because even though we are in support zone, with these markets, we can very easily lose another level and potentially go all the way back down to maybe the 110 before finding further support if ever we really break through this level in a substantial way. So for NVIDIA, exact same concept, guys. Since the stock is currently close to all of our assignment prices, we can write at the money strikes at our assigned price. However, if we want to play this a little bit more defensively, what I chose to do is write the 115 in the money covered calls. It gave me about, well, let's go check it together, right? So let's take a look at uh, NVIDIA right here and I'll bring it up. So NVIDIA is right there. So I chose to write the 115 covered calls just to give myself a little bit of cushion. And you can see I got about $535 for that one as well. Helps bring my cost down by about 530 bucks. And if ever it drops a little bit more, at least I can collect all that premium, bring down my average cost in the process, right? So that's just one way that I'm playing NVIDIA uh, very, very defensively. Eventually these stocks will recover, but it may take a little bit of time. So in that time, we're just farming covered call premium and trying our best to manage the losing position, right? Now, stock number three, another one that I got assigned last week. Definitely wasn't a great week. Usually we don't get assigned any of this plays, maybe one at most. But now there was a couple that we did get assigned, right? So Amazon, unfortunately, as well, we were looking for the 190 or 187.50 puts. Now, happy to say on the Monday session, it did open up both of those strikes. And then the rest of the week, it just kind of fell off a cliff. So now we will be assigned Amazon. Now, Amazon is not too far away from those assigned strikes once again. So let's take a look at what we can do with Amazon positions. So taking a look at Amazon right here, let's pull it up real quick. So Amazon, same concept, guys. If we got assigned at the 190 or 187.50, well, happy to say, guys, that there is some decent premium on those. The 190s do represent the desired premium and the 187.50s represent closer to 1%, which is also within the desired premium. However, if you want to play this one a bit more defensively, if you're unsure of Amazon's capacity to regain that 187.50 or the 190 by this week and you are nervous about maybe continued follow through to the downside, 
side. What we can do, guys, is write maybe one strike above currently. You can see the 185s pay very, very decent premium here, guys, and it's going to help bring your cost basis down a lot. Or we can even go in the money if we want to play this extremely defensively. We can do in the money 18250s or in the money 180s, right? I myself chose the 18250s, playing this one a little bit more defensively this week, just trying to avoid any further downside follow through and trying to cap our loss pretty much, right? So hopefully that is helpful for Amazon. A little bit of a more defensive strategy that I'm playing right now. If it was just a one-off and the S&P 500 and the QQQs were still in a very gorgeous daily uptrend, then I would probably would not be playing these as defensively. But since we are potentially due for maybe a couple weeks of consolidation, that's why I'm playing it a little bit more defensively. Couple that with the fact that we have tons of earnings this week and the next week, guys, I'm just not taking any chances whatsoever. Now, the third company we're looking at was Visa, guys. And thankfully, Visa, well, not thankfully, but unfortunately, rather, Visa did not give us any opportunity for entry. So on Visa, we were really, really looking for the 26250s or the 260 strike. Now, unfortunately, Visa, as of the Monday session, just really ran away from us. So it did not provide us any form of opportunity at these lower strikes. The idea was good. We are targeting a big area of support down here, but just there was never any premium to be had on those contracts because the market just ran away from us and we're not in the business of chasing these stocks here, guys. We need to wait for them to come to us. So unfortunately, no trade on Visa. Once again, the idea was good and I will potentially be looking at this one after, after, after their earnings on Tuesday afternoon. If ever we get a big gap down in this location right here, I may be writing Visa for the following week. Now, moving on, guys, we were also looking for another stock and this one performed pretty well. I had it in my portfolio as well. This one was Fortinet. So Fortinet, we were really targeting the 58 to $57 strikes, which was pretty much right down here. And happy to say, guys, that on the on the Tuesday session, we had a little bit of a dip here down into the 59.30 uh, area. Well, that did open up the $58 strikes and even the $57 strikes. If you waited until Wednesday, you would have got an opportunity to even write lower than that. 5650s were even open on Fortinet. So happy to say, guys, that all the strikes would have worked in our favor, ending above the 58. So if you would have written 58, 57, 56, we would have been all good. We've collected all of the premium, nice support area for Fortinet as a whole. So I really like the stock. Now, moving on, guys, the last trade we were looking at last week was Chipotle. And unfortunately, guys, Chipotle just continues its decline. Yes, the market valuation of this one is relatively rich, but the company is just doing an amazing job of uh of really honing down on its niche right now we were always speculating that well not speculate we we're always expecting that we we're going to have some monthly consolidation eventually and monthly consolidation is finally here right chipotle now down 23 percent off the all-time highs and it's never been a bad proposition starting to nibble a bit at chipotle when it's been down 20 percent in recent history right every single one of those dip buying opportunities was a very good dip buying opportunity right so chipotle daily oversold conditions right now we may be due for a little bit of a bounce but keep in mind chipotle has earning on the Wednesday session. So if ever we got assigned on Chipotle, Chipotle last week, we were looking for the 5580s, right below our expected move. And unfortunately, guys, well, Monday, the trade did open up for us. We were able to get in the mid 50s, even $50 range at the lowest, right? So let's say for all intents and purposes, we got assigned in the $55 range. Let's take a look. Can we write some covered calls this week in that $55 range? And let me tell you, since they have earnings, guys, it is going to be fairly juicy as well because there's a lot of premiums on earnings weeks, right? So if you want to be writing covered calls, let's take a look here. Well, we can see that at $55 right now, in the $50, $55 range, you can see we're getting a ton of premium, guys, almost 3%, right? So these are very, very good covered call premiums. However, if you think Chipotle may have a chance of missing their earnings and you want to, in other words, cap the loss, we shouldn't be down by too much right now. Maybe only down $1.50, $2 per share, which is not that much. But if you're nervous that Chipotle may have a bad earnings and maybe drop a little bit lower, we can play this one a little bit more defensively, guys. I myself went with the $50 calls, which which pay about $4.50 currently, right? Very, very nice, insulates us a little bit. And if we do get called, if let's say Chipotle ends over, at least we are locking in guys, 430. So 50 plus 450 is $54.50. Uh, $54 so if ever Chipotle ends above $50 and we get called away, at least our maximum loss is only about a dollar per share, not that much at all, right? So that's a, a little way to play Chipotle defensively. You can either play the assigned strike that we got assigned at if you're bullish on the company, but if you're a bit nervous for the earnings, I would not be opposed to be doing in the money calls. Once again, trying to play this defensively, trying to limit the losses as much as possible while the S&P 
and the QQQs are in full consolidation mode. So that is pretty much the options from last week, guys. My apologies once again. I try to give you guys the most solid plays at the most solid support levels in um in sectors that are currently thematically good right now, right? But unfortunately, there are a few weeks like this. As I said, this is probably the worst week for the top five options plays that we've had all year since we've been doing this. And unfortunately, guys, it just has to had to happen all at once, right? But that is the way of the market sometimes. Sometimes we do have to take losses um, on our positions, right? Or at least mitigate the losses as much as we can. Now, let's get into this week's top five options plays. And this week's top five options plays, guys, we're going to be going very, very risk off, very risk averse. Now, I'm going give, to be giving you guys plays but they're the very very solid plays that i found as well and we're going to be giving ourselves a very wide margin of error so number one guys we're going to be going for is tsm so tsm needs no introduction they absolutely destroyed their earnings last week and even though they destroyed their earnings guys they were still down <clears throat> after that earnings result. Now, it is going to be freeing up a nice, a couple of nice little zones for us on TSM because we are eventually looking for that monthly higher low for continuation of the uptrend. Such a beautiful company. The valuation is good and they gave extremely bullish guidance about the continuation of their growth for the rest of the year and for 2025. The CEO literally said they cannot keep up with demand. So this little consolidation that we have right there guys is a byproduct of the overall market coming down not because tsmc is doing anything wrong i still love this company so let's move in the expected move for tsmc is 157.85 but we want to be going a lot below that guys we want to be targeting 153 down to maybe even 150 or lower if we get some continuation follow through monday or tuesday we want to be going all the way down here guys on such a solid company approaching prior levels of resistance which should be support as well right and even the broader range the bigger box that I have down here is your previous all-time highs. So a lot of support down there, guys, if ever we do get assigned, right? So let's take a look at TSMC and see if we can find any strikes, guys, with some good premium below 157.85. Let's take a look at TSMC, shall we? So TSM, let's go shopping for some TSM below 158. So taking a look here, you will see that the premiums are fairly decent. We even have, even though the expected move is 157.85, look how much premium we have down here at the 152.50s, well over half a percent. Half a percent of this, guys, would be about, let's call it about 75, 76 cents, and we're getting 89. So what I want to target, guys, is 150 or lower. If ever we get some continuation Monday or Tuesday, that will free up 150 or better. Better. as low as we can go guys while still getting our half a percent move right so if tsmc opens up three two three percent negative into the expected move on the monday or tuesday session right away guys we need to be going as low as possible think below 150 150 147 145 even if it comes down extremely hard as low as possible in this range of support hopefully that makes sense so moving on the second stock we're going to be looking at guys is once again another semiconductor play because i want to be buying these semiconductor dips there's so many beautiful com companies excuse me that are on very good dips right now. So the second one is going to be AVGO. We're going to be trying to make a play on this former resistance area at the all-time highs, which is now going to be support. And that is pretty much 143 down to 133, right? AVGO currently on a very nice dip from the all-time highs, down about 15%. So if that weakness does continue into this week, let's see if we can go shopping. The expected move is 150.36. So let's go a little bit lower than that, guys, shall we? So moving on to AVGO. Let's take a look here. Oops, I think I chose the wrong uh, the wrong button right there. So let's take a look at AVGO real quick. So AVGO. Now we're going to be looking at the um, anything below pretty much. Sorry, 150.36, right? So 150.36 is right about here on the put side, right? So keep in mind, guys, at the 150s, they're paying very, very nice premium. You would need to see at least 75 cents, but we want to be going even lower than that, more towards the 75 cent mark. So we are going to be eyeing the 147s at a first glance. However, if AVGO has a further dip on the Monday or Tuesday session, bringing us down low 150s, guys, then we need to be going even lower, as close as possible to where this big support zone starts, maybe the 145s, 143s. So the strikes that I want this week on AVGO, guys, going to be very conservative, 145 and lower as low as we can go guys depending on the size of the move as close as possible to this 143 140 area of support that is going to be pretty much it for avgo hopefully that makes sense as well now moving on our third stock is going to be one that's been recurring on the channel Fortinet. Fortinet, such a solid company, guys. And you guys saw what happened with CrowdStrike last Friday with the global IT outage, right? CrowdStrike dropped almost 14%. And what did Fortinet do? 
absolutely nothing, right? You can see as of the Friday session, they were actually up. Such a solid company, decent valuation, and coming in to a very large support box right here, 56 down to about 53. So the expected move for Fortinet this week is 56.38. So let's have a look at Fortinet, see if we can find anything below the expected move, more specifically 56 or even potentially 55. So you can see here, guys, that at the 56 strike, there is already some decent premium, 31 cents. We would need to see a minimum of 28 cents for this one to be worth it for us, right? If you don't know how I'm doing this in my head, once again, guys, just divide the strike price by two in your head. That's 28. You want to be looking for cent increments. The proof is right here. If we get 0.28 cents divided by 56, you'll see that is exactly half a percent, right? So moving on, guys, 56 looks good, but we want to be going as low as we can go, right? So let's say the indexes have a bit of a sell-off tomorrow and Fortinet gets caught up in that sell-down. Well, if ever we open up tomorrow, 58, $57, that may even free up the 55. So we want to, we want to be going with one of these strikes, 56. 55, 54, as low as we can go, depending on the size of the move down on the Monday or Tuesday session, right? So anything in this big support zone will be good for me and I will be playing this one myself. Now, the fourth play that we're gonna be looking at here, guys, is a very defensive stock, right? So keep in mind, guys, to do this video today, I literally went through at least, at least 120 different charts, most of them defensive names. But the problem is, guys, a lot of the defensive names, they don't have a lot of premium because they're more value stocks. They don't fluctuate that much on a weekly basis, right? And a lot of them, unfortunately, have earnings. I would love to play UPS. I would love to play some of the defense names like Lockheed Martin. Um, Honeywell's chart is extremely, extremely strong. I would love to play short puts on this one this week, right? Honeywell looking excessively strong uh, over here at the two. 10 level right here looking for the potential breakout right extremely extremely strong company right there so there's so many defensive names that i went through guys it's unfortunately guys so many of them have earnings or have a company in their sector that has earnings as well so i just can't play them would have loved to play abby as well there was a lot of names looking very very good so i'm choosing the ones that are the most defensive that i could find that still have good premium and that may not be affected by earnings so Moving on, guys, let's take a look at OXY, and I'll show you those plays after, but we may have to do them with shares. So moving on to, um, to OXY, right? OXY, one of Warren Buffett's favorite companies, pretty much one of the only uh, energy companies that he does own, extremely large position for him. And I like this one, guys, just because in the event of a, na a continued narrative of a Trump presidency, energy stocks should run very, very hard. Number two, rate cuts. Rate cuts, obviously, you've seen the pivot that's happened away from big tech into more value-oriented names. And big tech, uh, I mean, oil and energy stocks as a whole stand to gain a lot from that. Take a look at XLE, your uh, ETF for energy as a whole, right? Look at this potential monthly breakout pattern, right? This is a gorgeous monthly bull flag. Just maybe looking for some continuation. So I would not be opposed at being assigned some oxy anywhere in this lower $60 range because I am expecting the monthly breakout later on in the year. So we'll be playing this one a little bit more aggressively. The expected move on OXY is about 61.65. And you can say, yeah, but Will, the larger support area is down here. And you would be absolutely correct. However, I'm not sure it's gonna make it, guys. Weekly uptrend is starting to be in motion right now. And once again, I'll remind you, we're looking for the monthly breakout in the same fashion of its underlying ETF, which is XLE. That's why I'm, you know, I would be willing to wait for OXY down in this lower level, but we may not get there. So what I'll probably do is I'll still be writing here, but in the event we come back down here, guys, I'll just be writing even more. So OXY, let's get into it. 61.65 is the expected move. Let's see if we can go shopping on OXY over the course of this week below the expected move. So one, uh, $61 or better. Now this one being a more value name, you will see what I mean by the fact that there's no premium unless you get very, very close. So the expected move right here, 61, uh, 65, and you'll see there's only really half a percent at the 62s. That's paying 33 cents. Now, because it's such a sector that is in favor, I would not be opposed to playing the 62s even though it is above the expected move. It's above our moving averages, right? And we are trying for that eventual weekly breakout. So I would not be opposed to playing the 62s. However, if we get a little bit of a dip on a Monday or Tuesday morning, that should possibly free up the 61s as well, guys. So depending on the size of the move on OXY to the downside this week, guys, gonna be looking for either one of these three strikes. 62, 61, $60. I love the stock in this lower location right here. And we do have a short term area of support down there before our larger one down here as well. So that's why I'm willing to play the lower $60 range 
on OXY should be a very easy trade for us. Now, trade number five, guys, is going to be Amazon. So Amazon, I include it because yes, it is big tech, but Amazon is on a very nice dip. And I think the company will have one of its best years in the history of the company this year. Long-term bulls are in full control of this chart, monthly bulls full control. And keep in mind the area that we're charting, guys, huge prior resistance to the all-time highs. That is now gonna be support and Amazon so far, right? They have been on a significant decline and usually buying Amazon. Amazon, we're targeting down here, guys, right? Down in the lower 177, 175. That will be a 13, 10, 13% dip on Amazon. And in the context of bull markets, usually whenever you find Amazon on a 10 to 13% dip, it has always been a decent buying opportunity. This was a huge bear market, of course. But when we go back in recent memory, in the context of bull markets, you can see every time Amazon, uh, you know, gets down from its highs, anywhere between well, this was COVID, right? We can't really count COVID. But anytime they come, anytime they come down, right? Uh, in the context of an overall bull market, 10, 13%, it's usually a very good buying opportunity. So that's why I do like Amazon, even though they have been on a decline in the uh, rotation out of big tech, right? So I'm gonna keep playing it. So one expected move for Amazon is 177.03. So let's go shopping for some Amazon premium below 177.03, shall we? So taking a look at Amazon right here, and they are coming, they're not quite in daily oversold conditions, but four hour are definitely oversold conditions. So maybe expecting a little bit of a bounce. So moving on to Amazon guys, sorry for all the, uh, the all the parentheses, but I feel that they should be set, right? So Amazon moving on, you can see at the expected move, they are only really paying about uh, 31 cents. So not that much premium, or sorry, 177.03 rather, I'm three strikes lower. So 177.50 is gonna be the closest one to the expected move, but we wanna go below that, right? So we wanna be trying targeting the 175s. The problem about the 175s is that there's not as much premium there, right? However, because we're playing this a little bit more defensively this week, a little bit less aggressively, I would not be opposed to playing the 175s even if it doesn't represent our half a percent rule, right? It's slightly under, usually be, you'd wanna be seeing at least 85, 90 cents on this bid, but I would not be opposed to playing Amazon at these levels. However, if for some which reason we continue the drop into Monday down, let's say into the lower 180s, 179, 178, then obviously guys, there'll be a lot more premium at the 175s, but we may even be able to shop at the 172.50s. So I want one of these two strikes on Amazon this week, 175 or 172.50, depending on the size of the move down Monday or on the Tuesday session. Be patient with this one, guys, right? Be very patient because this is a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous area. So if we can find some dips in the 175 or 172.50, I think it's going to be a very great trade to say the least, just because we're at such a longer term support area for the bulls, right? This is a monthly and weekly level, so it should hold up a lot better than our most recent one did as of last week, right? So those are pretty much the top five options plays for this upcoming week. Hopefully that made sense for everybody. Now, in terms of earnings plays, so once again, guys, full, full, full disclaimer, I never advise anybody to play earnings at all. But for those of you who do want to play earnings, who do want to assume the risk, I'll go over once again my earnings strategy that I run in any any given week, right? So it's called the two standard deviation move. So the first thing that we do, guys, so we're going to be writing puts on these things once again, or we can do put credit spreads as well. The strategy is the exact same. We're going to be going for two standard deviations away from the expected move. These are all the companies that I will be playing for earnings, guys. So I've highlighted them all for you guys. Take a screenshot or whatnot. These are pretty much the only ones, pretty much. Maybe I should have included another one. I'll probably play, uh, might play a little bit. Wait, can I get a little bit of uh, action here on my cursor? Probably not. Oops, that one's not the right one. So Ford as well, I might be playing. Maybe a little bit of IBM as well. So all of these are gonna be two times the expected move in terms of standard deviations, right? So let me get into the gist of the strategy real quick. So. First thing that I do, when I'm looking to play a company before earnings, I am always gonna be playing them right before the close. So if I want to play Tesla, I will be looking at earnings on Tesla right before the close, 15, 10 minutes before the close on the Tuesday session. So when it's 15 to 10 minutes before the close of the Tuesday session, the first thing that I'm gonna do, and obviously if it's before the open, we do this 10, 15 minutes before the prior close right here, right? So what I'm gonna be doing is, let's take a look at Tesla real quick, right? So two standard deviations. First thing I do, 10, 15 minutes before the close, is I go to this website right here, Options AI, plug in the expected move, for Tesla, right? So let's take a look at Tesla. And let's say guys, it was, I know it's a Sunday right now, but let's say this is 10, 15 minutes before the close. I go here and I see, okay, the expected move is 218.39 to the downside. This is what we call one standard deviation. This is the expected move. We wanna be going 
two times the expected move to give ourselves a very wide margin of error, guys, right? So keep in mind, the expected move right here is about $20, right? Just look at 239.20 is the current share price, 218 to the downside is the expected move. So we wanna be going two times the expected move, which would be two times $20, $40 away, so that would be around the $200 strike, right? So then I take a look at the $200 uh, level on Tesla. This is the second thing that I do. Is the $200 level, two times ex expected move, is it a big level on the weekly time frame? And as we can see right here, yes, 200 is the start of a very big weekly support level on the weekly chart, right? $200 right here, but it does go all the way down to about 190, right? So 200 to 190. So if I wanna be very safe on Tesla this week, what I'm gonna do is, let's pull up the options for Tesla, see if there's any premium on them, right? So moving on to Tesla right now, and let's pull up the full options week. This is step number three, of course. This is the last step. We take a look at the premium, right? Well, obviously, guys, we can see that at the 200s, there's about 78 cents in premium, which is close to half a percent. Half a percent would be a dollar, right? So it might be a little bit too risky. There's still a, a bit too much premium right here. Usually, I want to stay about a quarter percent, right? So maybe the 195s, even the 190s, guys. And if you're thinking, well, 35 cents isn't a lot of premium, keep in mind, the gist of this strategy is the very following morning, guys, regardless of what happens on the stock, the very following morning in the first hour of trading, we are closing these options at either a 100% win or very close because they're very far out of the money, right? If ever Tesla goes up or stays flat or goes slightly down, then most likely our puts are going to be completely worthless. We're going to be able to close them, right? However, if Tesla comes down a lot and comes very close to our assignment price, we just close them, guys. Even if they're going to be at a loss, even if we still have a bit of a margin of error for the week, we close the trade, guys. We're not going to try to and stick into these um, for the entire week, right? We just close. These are pure, pure, pure earnings plays. So that being said, guys, that's why I tend to stay a little bit more risk averse on these. I would be tempted to take maybe the 190s, even maybe the 185s. Extremely, extremely defensive here, guys, right? And if you think it's not a lot of money, we're only playing these for one day, right? So if I were to get 35 cents for one day of trading, if you were to do that on a full week basis, let's say, that's a $1.75. $1.75 divided by your desired strike, let's say 190, that is, that is you know, almost 1% in weekly premium. So it doesn't look like a lot of money up front, but the weekly ROI on an ROI basis, per week is very, very strong, right? So that is how I play my earnings once again. I always look whether or not it's at a big weekly support level for two times the expected move, and I stay very, very conservative. The gist of the strategy, guys, is the, we're trying to play as many of these as possible to get the larger odds in our favor. Are there gonna be a few here and there that we take big losses on? Absolutely. A couple big losses that I took last week. Well, one of them was Domino's Pizza. I tried to make another one on ASML. So there are some times that these will unravel and go against us. However, if we're playing the law of large numbers, we should have a lot more winners than we do have losers. And that should give us a net positive PL at the end of the day. But we have to be very, very selective on the companies, guys. I only take the biggest and best companies in their industry to do this, right? We're not trying to play this on companies that are lesser known or extremely volatile, right? Only the biggest and the best to keep all our odds in our favor. And sometimes even when we go with the biggest and the best, like ASML, even then we can take some losses. So you can imagine what we're not playing the biggest and the best how big the losses can be. So be very, uh, very, very mindful with your company selection, right? Number two earnings strategy that I have for you guys is just gonna be after earnings, right? So once again, all these companies after earnings, we can play them with shares. If you don't have the money to be playing short puts, um, or if you don't really understand put credit spreads or stuff like that, I'm not gonna start explaining it in this video because we're constrained on time, right? But what we can be looking at is the same, same, same strategy, guys. Establish your weekly support levels and they're not single lines, they're always ranges. They don't have to be exact ranges, right? So I'll give you a few examples of how we can play these with shares. So let's say we want to take, um, let's start it off with UPS, right? I know Spotify circled first, but let's take, for example, UPS. Let's say I wanted to play UPS after earnings. And let's say we're gonna be looking for um, big moves to the downsides. So we highlight our weekly support levels. Weekly support levels on UPS, you can see right here. Start of the area is where we started bottoming out right here. And then it's all the way down to our previous resistance level down here, right? So if ever UPS has a very bad earnings report, 
and they come down hard into this level. And I'm looking to pick up this company, guys. Well, obviously, we can just buy shares, right? So we're going to be looking to buy shares and the stop loss pretty much goes really below your prior resistance, which will now be support. So if I had to play this one, let's say UPS gaps down 127, 126, 125, I'll be entering a position here with shares, small position, stop loss goes there, and we're looking for the recovery of the stock, right? So that's just a quick way to do it. If you want me to go through them with you, let's go through a few of them, right? So Coca-Cola, right? So let's take a look at Coca-Cola. Does it have a big weekly level of support if ever they miss earnings? Yes, this one right here, right? 61 down to 59. Coca-Cola is not known to miss earnings, but let's say they have an earnings disaster, pull down a little bit more, 61, $60, right? Well, we can write short puts for the following week, but if ever we wanna do shares, Closure to this area, that's a good area that we can do it as well. Uh, moving on, let's take a look at Lockheed Martin. I'm just going to go through a few extra ones with these. So big area of weekly support that we're coming up on. If ever Lockheed Martin has a bad earnings report, usually they don't move that much. But if ever we come down, we know it's a sector that's in favor because of all the, the calamities going across around the world and everything. Come down lower 450, 440 area, maybe an area that I look to nibble. Then our stop loss obviously goes below our support area right down here. 440, and then we're looking for the trade to uh, recapture the previous highs, right? So that's just a quick way, and I go through all of these. If I see a great company that sells off a bit too much after earnings, and that comes into a very big area of weekly support, that is what I'm gonna be looking to do. Another good one this week is gonna be Google, let's say. Let's say you wanna play Google after earnings. Where is the large area of support on the weekly? Well, we have to just zoom out right here, and we can see that there's a fairly good area of support right in this location right here, right? So let's call that pretty much um, 170 down to about 165, right? So if ever Google comes down into this region right here, very, very hot, and potentially couple that with maybe daily oversold conditions a little bit, coming down into here, guys, right? I'll be looking to enter into Google right here and hold the shares for a little bit of a swing. So hopefully that makes sense, guys. I go through each one of these after the earnings. So hopefully that makes sense, okay? Now, um, that is pretty much everything that I had for you guys in terms of our earnings today. Was there anything more that I wanted to show you guys? I know the video is getting a bit long, but in terms of also swing, if you haven't seen, I'm gonna include this all in the same video, so sorry, but I wanna give you guys the most amount of information. It's not because, don't think for a, cert, for a certain point that I don't know which stocks to pick, right? No, it's not that at all. It's ever, it depends on you. Everybody's different. Everybody likes playing different industries. Everybody has different risk tolerance. My purpose is to give you as many ideas as possible so you can then filter through them. Okay, I like this one. Oh, I don't like that company. I'm not gonna play this one. Oh, there's a good idea that I may maybe not have thought, thought of, right? That is how I want to structure these videos, giving you guys the most amount of trade ideas. Though trade ideas for straight swing shares that I'm looking for, if you don't wanna play options this week, the swing share trades that I'm looking to play, guys, very, very simply, OXY, swing trade position, guys, for the next couple of weeks into next couple of months, OXY. Another one that I'm looking at, guys, John Deere, same reason, industrials, lower interest rates, and the potential Trump presidency narrative. That's the important part, right? Deere, very nice support level down here, looking for maybe some swing trade appreciation with some shares. Another great company, guys, into it, into it, gorgeous cup and handle on the weekly, looking for the all time high breakout, swing share trade capacity. MELI, Mercado Libre, one of my favorite growth stocks in the entire market right now. Same thing, looking for the potential tightening up and eventual breakout of the all time highs. Monthly long term uptrend is in motion right now. Anything, guys, 1600s, 1500s, I am buying shares for the potential swing trade out in a few weeks up to a uh, up to a month or two, right? Another one, guys, Vici, I'm one of my favorite REITs in the market, right? B glorious breakout, looking for maybe a retest of the sub 30 levels right here, looking to change up the weekly trend for some appreciation. If not, lower area right here, gorgeous area that I'm looking to build some positions. These are not the top five options plays for the week. These are just larger plays if ever you didn't see my weekly video recaps, right? Right? Visa, keep a close eye on Visa after earnings. If we come back down here, 262, glorious, glorious, glorious entry on the monthly, guys. Such an amazing entry for such an amazing company. MasterCard, same exact thing. Beautiful monthly uptrend. Looking for some pullback into this location right here. Support is so strong right down here. Looking for that swing trade appreciation, right? Another good one. They have, these have, they have earnings on Tuesday. If ever they come down after earnings, Louis Vuitton, lower areas in the mid 130s. If ever they have a bad earnings or the market doesn't receive it well, such a beautiful company, guys, for a longer term swing trade. Monthly bulls are still in control, looking for that expansion, guys. This company is going nowhere. Look at the long-term trajectory of the company, pretty much. 
since they started acquiring all of their competition, right? Such a beautiful company as well. McDonald's. McDonald's has earnings in one week, but still never been a bad time buying McDonald's at the monthly 50 EMA. As you can see at the weekly 200 EMA as well, as you can see right back here, right? Going through these quickly, but such a nice opportunity for such a long-term solid company, right? Another one, Pepsi. Pepsi, I keep bringing this one up as well. They just had their earnings right? They did issue a fact that the consumer was slowing down a bit, but their profit margins are very, very strong. Daily uptrend starting again, monthly, beautiful long-term range on a monthly, just looking for that eventual monthly recapture, looking so, so, so good, guys, right? So there's just a few defensive plays. I'm not going to go through the list. I did a huge list last week of about 25 plus stocks, right? So hopefully this video has been helpful for a lot of you identifying which plays can be good for short puts, which plays can maybe, maybe be good for after earnings for some share swing trades, depending on the size of your account, right? Just throwing as many themes and names at you as possible for you to kind of go get, get some ideas from them all. That's the purpose of this video. Anyways, none of this is financial advice anyways. So hopefully you guys appreciated today's video. If you did, consider dropping a like. Also consider subscribing to the channel, guys. If you're new, we do these every single Sunday after the club. Um, every single Sunday for the top five options plays. I give a lot of bonus plays always, but today's video is a bit longer just because of all the volatility and all the dips we've had over the past week, plus a massive rotation that's underway from big tech and semiconductors into value. So I have to talk about a lot of things, right? And lastly, guys, if you have any questions whatsoever on stock picks, on strategy, anything you want, leave it down below in the comment section. I'll be more than happy to answer you guys. So obviously there's so many more plays, but if you want to see the plays that I'm taking on a weekly basis, be sure to take a look at my videos that I do Monday through Friday, our daily market recaps. I will be going over so many plays this week. So hopefully to see you there as well. Take care guys. See you tomorrow in our um, uh, daily market recap video. Peace.